right hey guys what is up we got another video here same spot you know you know you guys know me i uh, do one video in a spot or by myself or with my friend and i and then you know i try to do one in the same spot as well because bringing my equipment out and you know i live in an apartment complex so i don't want to be filming over there too much noise or people wondering what's going on so this is a nice parking lot here by the school but i'm finally doing what i promised before guys a little beautiful blue jay up there Oh yeah, sure. yeah. They're foraging, getting the, getting the little uh, bugs that are yeah for fall. Fall's in the air, guys. My favorite <laughs> season. Yeah, send me some fall gifts, guys. I don't know. Maybe I'll get a PO box and start doing. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, maybe you guys like fall too. It's my favorite. But uh, anyway, I'm doing finally what I kept saying, which is I'm emptying my oil catch can today. And that's right here, guys. You guys have seen it in plenty of videos. It's a cheap one, not an expensive Mishimoto. I got this for like 20 bucks off eBay or something. And it came with like really bad smelling hose, but I got some good proper PCV hose, which is fuel and oil safe, which I'll send you links to the two I used. I used one set from Radium Engineering, which is I think my 5 eighths, which goes from our lower PCV intake into the manifold from the main PCV up top, okay? And then I got the, um, and it gives you two barb fittings, a smaller, two sets of small ones and two sets of large ones, like a, a, a half inch or three quarter and a five eighths one. And so I, I have like the five eighths and the, or the three quarter and the half inch on. The half inch goes from our actual PCB on top on the valve cover in to the end of the oil catch can, which is baffled. And then I put some steel wool in there. And then the larger, from Radium Engineering 5 8 or uh, 5 8 goes all the way to the inlet in the manifold, which is the cleaned, but still no unmetered air is entering the system because it's not a breather system, which is what we want to maintain because we have a MAP sensor and not a MAF sensor. So we want to maintain the pressure in the system. Um, I guess you guys could say that because the system does have some extra volume now, we might be getting like um, some changes maybe to the MAP. Sure there are, I'm not sure entirely, but yeah guys, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. We're gonna be changing, adding some new Teflon along the threads on Amazon where I was looking at maybe getting a, a kind of nice one with a drain valve, but I'm just gonna keep this one cause you know, just don't need to spend more money. Um, might upgrade it later on, I don't know, but it, it's doing it good cause you guys are gonna see the stuff come out and you guys are gonna be probably surprised. It's not too much of a big deal with our engine cause we have multi-port injection. If you have the 1.8 liter new from the basically the non-GDI version, which that would be beneficial for you if you had a catch can because then, you know, your valves don't get sprayed via MPI injection. You get gasoline direct injection so your valves can get dirty. So you'd benefit more from a catch can, but this is nice because we're not getting that stuff in our throttle body and, uh, sorry, our inside our intake system in general, inside the manifold, which doesn't get fuel. So we're gonna empty it out. We're also gonna put some RTV because I saw on an Amazon review Basically, a guy did leak testing, which I didn't think about. Um, he put, you know, soapy water over the intake and did a pressure test. And even though it was Teflon on the thread and all that, you still got sealing problems. So, and they do come with an O-ring. So I'm going to basically put RTV right below the O-ring and sandwich it tight, along with a really good, uh, good layer of um, Teflon uh, pipe uh, pipe tape. That way, it gets a really good seal. But yeah, you guys are going to see the undoing of it, and then the little dipstick feature which is kind of nice to let you see the level. And um, you can look up the brand. I got it on eBay, not Amazon, it's Osias. But we're gonna go ahead and get started, guys. So and you guys are gonna see that stuff come out, that old blow by gas and oil. So, yeah. And right there, guys, is our oil catch can. And you can see the 5 8 out and the half inch or, uh, yeah, half inch in, which is actually Mishimoto line as well, um, not radium engineering. So we're just gonna zoom in here and yeah, these are my worm clamps, which I put on and just need to get my screwdriver out. Here it is. We're also gonna be cleaning the surfaces, taking the old stuff off. We'll do this one first here. And we're just gonna leave the worm clamps on the hose itself. You can see it just comes right off and there's already like some Kind of nasty stuff i don't know exactly what everything is but you know it's not pretty <laughs> so let's go ahead and clean that off there get that all removed 
Yeah, it smells like old, I don't know, like old stuff. Let's go ahead and clean out the inside of the, the tubing here as well. Make sure I get anything out of there. Yeah, that's not, that's not good. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and undo the flathead. Next, little handy Stanley uh, ratcheted screwdriver set, or I guess bit set. You can change your bits and it's stored at the bottom of the palm here of the tool. And you also have a angled operation as well. So pretty cool, good investment. I can't link the tool because I got it at Home Depot, but it's called the Stanley Fat Max if you guys want to invest in it. Very nice. Has a neutral position as well if you don't want the ratcheting feature, but I'm going to go ahead and put that bit in there. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the flathead. What do you think, Lawrence? You think more has gone in since then? Maybe about an inch up? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and remove this one now. Now, this one's a bit more tight. I, I can feel that already. So, this is going to take a little bit more force to get off because it's a really, really good barbed fit. And that means it's going to be kind of a pain to take off. There we go. So, that's all done there. So cool guys, now that this is off, I'm gonna show you guys the dipstick feature and how it works. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you just also wanna put little, see I have to replace my Teflon tape, but you can see it right there. And it'll basically have little indicators here where you can see the little indicators in the oil and it's about there, so. And it doesn't sit bottomed out. So, you know, you only start worrying about it when it gets to that third line. And even then you have a lot ways to go. And actually, because we're gonna be servicing the unit today, we're gonna try to, uh, this is kind of tricky to do, but we want to get the little hex keys on the top. And I don't know the exact size, so we're gonna have to kind of guess here and make sure we get the right size, which that's not it. I forget which size it is. Might be the same as the 10 millimeter sockets, and it is. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen these up, and that allows to remove our unit I basically mounted the bracket that came with it and I drilled some hole into the OEM uh, diagnostic. Diagnostic, uh, you can see that right there. Engine diagnosis for the Tex, the dealership uh, bracket. You can see where it slides in, it goes right there. And I just have it tucked here because they can still have access to it and there's no worries, but it has a nice bracket so it's not just sitting around randomly. And we're just gonna have to keep working at it like that until we get it undone. Now we're gonna put our oil in here because that oil pan I brought is actually for good oil if I overfill and then that way it's always clean oil, not old oil to put back into the engine. But we're gonna go ahead and open this now. <laughs> and um, I think it's just heavier than I remember because I haven't held it in a while or there's actually a lot of blow by here. So you can see there's our O-ring and Teflon tape we're gonna be changing out along with the Teflon tape on that. And we're gonna be adding RTV to make sure we have complete positive pressure. Oh, actually it is just heavier than I remembered. <laughs> but you can see guys right there that there's our baffling. You can see that right there in the unit. And you can see the steel wool in there and you guys can see quite a bit of blow by oil and gases in there. It's more than I had for sure, but not that much more. The top unit is like, solid billet aluminum or steel or whatever so it's pretty hefty but yeah guys definitely interesting we're gonna go ahead and pour this out kind of maybe get like a close-up pouring it into the bottle i don't know it smells of gasoline and fuel of course because well that's what it captures so there you guys go look at that let's get that in there Oh, there's like some sludge and stuff too. Yeah, we're gonna clean out the whole thing. We're gonna give this a little like beauty treatment. Wait, way it's ready for its next service interval, guys. But yeah, definitely punch it, you know. <laughs> let's, let's get that done. All right, guys, now that we got this mostly cleaned up here, we are gonna be doing the removal of the old nasty Kind of satisfying actually but <laughs> maybe getting the old see that it's kind of <laughs> kind of oddly satisfying Did you put that there yeah uh, i mean it doesn't look like that when you put it on but uh, it's white like yeah, like paper yeah. towels normally but it's yellow because of all the 
Yeah, you, that actually says something. That means that it, the tolerance isn't that good, which of course, that's what the guy in the Amazon thing did when he did the leak test, the Amazon review, and you get like, you know, the Mishimoto ones are probably have finer tolerances, so you get less of this. Of course, you'd probably still use this kind of Teflon tape stuff, but like less of it maybe, I don't know. So I'm just trying to find another point here where it'll come out because it's kind of tricky getting it uh, to come out all the way. Okay, that's a good pull. That one's kind of kind of coming out there. You're kind of breaking up the other one. See that? And then really get it all out. You can see the clean threads show up. This is pretty satisfying. Out with the old and with the new. I'm gonna be putting the RTV gasket by Permatex, max oil resistant, right, a bead right below the O-ring. I'm gonna clean the O-ring as well. And uh, probably put some oil on there, uh, some good oil, that way it's been sealed and kind of protected after we get the oil. And then the rest of it's gonna be some new, uh, better tape. Uh, you just use some generic tape, but I'm using the Oatly Fast Tape, which is, I think, it's gray, so it's got a good seal. And um, this is just some kind of random Teflon tape I got with like a little faucet thing or something for the uh, home shower head faucet uh, filter. But just go ahead and see that kind of makes like a Forms a cheese. <laughs> yeah, like cheese, kind of. Yeah, exactly. And there we go. I think that's all of it. So I'm gonna clean the threads here. And then i um, going to be getting a little, let's see, hopefully that'll let me get under there. There we go. You can see that. Put some new oil on this thing. It feels kind of, kind of dry because it's not like oil is really contacting it. And that'll also help with the sealing a bit. I want to be careful around the area though because I don't want the, uh, it to affect the RTV, right? So. Yeah, that's this one's all clean and ready now, guys. So we're gonna take off these threads here again. That's the they give you two sizes of each. So again, that's our in and that's our out. Okay, so so we're gonna use a set of pliers here to remove this. That's loose. Do the rest by hand. You guys are gonna see the old thread stuff come out as well. The old Teflon tape. There you guys go. There's the O-ring, and these are aluminum as well. So we're gonna go ahead and clean the ports on the inside there, and make sure they're nice and cleaned up. Just like that. Kind of clean in there with a towel as well to get any lint from the unit itself. There we go. And then got to undo this one as well, the bigger one. This one's going to need some more help from the pliers. But yeah, that one's got a little bit more Teflon tape on it, so it's a bit more. Aggressive, I guess, in the, in the tightening. But yeah, same same deal, guys. Just gonna clean it out. You can see all the old oil and stuff coming out. And that got in between the threads, which you know that tells us that the seal's not perfect. So that that RTV is gonna help because the O-ring can only do so much in this case. So this is gonna really help us here. All right, guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the. Yeah, I know. All right, guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the Teflon off our dipstick here. This isn't getting RTV, because that's for easy access. Not gonna be, I need to be able to remove that. This stuff will get RTV and Teflon as well. Pretty much be the end of the video. Reinstall it and rehook everything up. All right, guys, so now we are gonna get to the gasket and Teflon tape part. Just went over here with a grease wipe, cleaned all the threads off, got everything done. I think what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and get from my, uh, my dipstick here, and I'm just gonna Get some oil out and I'm going to put the oil that I want on the uh, 
the O-rings to make sure they're nice and uh, uh, lubricated here. And you can just see like that. We're just gonna kind of put it on there. Can you hold this? It's like out. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So we're just gonna go ahead and coat that with some nice, mostly clean engine oil because just kind of just did this a while ago, my engine oil change. That was a video though, but I'm just gonna make sure, you know, it's got some nice, some nice uh, coverage there. Make sure the O-ring stays healthy basically, guys. That's what you want. And then we're gonna set our O-rings just like that. And got my friend Lawrence here holding the dipstick. It's kind of hard to hold it while showing you guys. So there we go. I'm gonna set this right here. Just make sure that doesn't fly off because we need that. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. And then get that all. Get that all done there. Perfect. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Another oddly satisfying video. Okay, guys, so maybe I'll, I thought this is another oddly satisfying part, but maybe you can get it like coming out here. How long have you had that for? Oof. I think I got it. Come on. <laughs> coming out. Let's go ahead and put on our O-rings here first because that was the first thing to have on, I think. And so we will do that. And so we got our O-rings there, just oiled them. And we're gonna go ahead and put the main one here on the, the can itself. What do you guys think? Go ahead and put a comment in. That's uh, how much we got there. Maybe that surprised you how much actually comes out of the 1.8 liter. And that's maybe after a good thousand miles well more than a thousand i want to say actually i did it before the oil change so maybe five thousand miles so we don't get that much we still get it but not that much so not too bad guys and there you go now we're going to go ahead and i think we're going to do our teflon tape first because i don't want to work around with gasket with the teflon tape so and again when you're doing teflon tape you want to uh, the direction of the thread that is the landing thread. So if you wrap this way, the thread is going to be that way and you want it going away from it. So you're actually going to wrap this way. So when you thread it in, it's not going to, the teeth aren't going to un undo it, right? So I'm uh, going to go ahead and get a nice layer here, starting from the top just about and kind of get it going here. We want room for our RTV down there looped over itself and then once you get it to that point you'll be you'll be golden and you kind of want to stretch it into the threads like that so that you're making sure it's nice and uh, nice and on there perfect okay cool guys and then we're gonna go ahead and no worries you got it all right thank you we're gonna go ahead and get our razor here and get rid of that excess kind of see it going in there and then just like that and it kind of makes sure we really get in there and get off the part we don't need just like that because we don't need that stuff on there and I go like that like that and kind of cut off the excess and we're gonna do that for the other ones. I'm gonna pause it and then I'll move on to this one as well. We're gonna do the uh, Teflon on that. Once I do all of them, we'll get to the video with the applying the gasket maker. Online work. <laughs> well, no, it's just, it's just, just, a, lot of just a lot to say, yeah. All right, guys, so here, let's just do oh, this real quick. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of the RTV here. We already have our gasket on there, or the, uh, sorry, the Teflon tape, and then we're just gonna kinda Kind of put it on here, like around just like this, to kind of give it some extra sealing to work with when it sandwiches in there. So we're gonna go ahead and thread this on here, just carefully so that it starts biting till we're gonna clean off our excess gasket. We're gonna make sure this has a really good seal on here, actually, that's the benefit of it. There we go. Now we have a nice, Teflon and gasketed fit as well, so you guys can see that. 
and then we're just gonna clean the excess. So let me just get my little towel here to do that and then all right, cool guys. That's all done. The O-ring's in there and it's got a nice seal. And yeah, it was really heavy because the this thing is just heavy. I'm gonna go ahead and put this unit in here now, a little dipstick that's been rethreaded. No RTV on that though. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that in. Nice and tight there. We have a good seal. Kind of get it on there and I'm gonna get my pliers now and tighten that up and we'll continue after it's all done and we're gonna reinstall and then we'll finish off the video. Sealed up, a little bit of stuff on there that's refined but we're just gonna mount it right back up just like you saw and then we're gonna say goodbye. Thanks for watching, that concludes the what the uh, pour out looked for our catch oil can after about five to 7,000 miles. So as always guys, this is fifth gen Hyundai Elantra guys and God bless you and always enjoy the drive.